Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video which is a really quick win. So something that Dr. Humans tell me all the time that they find confusing is the relationship between aldosterone and potassium and it shows up in MCQs in lots of different ways. So we're gonna go through the absolute basics of this, the really quick win, and then I'm gonna show you where you can apply this knowledge when you're working through your MCQs. So let's do this. So we're just gonna dive right into the collecting duct here. In the collecting duct, there are cells where aldosterone has its main effect, which is salt and water reabsorption. It does have another job, but its main job is salt and water reabsorption. So what's gonna happen here is inside this little principal cell, inside the collecting duct, we have the mineral corticoid receptor. And aldosterone's gonna swing by here, and it's gonna to bind to this receptor. And this receptor is basically a transcription factor and that's gonna do another couple of things. It is gonna place a few channels here. So we have the ENAC channel, which is a, the epithelial sodium channel. We have ROMK, which is just a potassium channel. And we have sodium, potassium, ATPase. Now, these channels all work together. It's kind of like a rig, okay? We'll start with the sodium potassium ATPase. So around the place, in the kidney and elsewhere, this is really put on planet Earth to keep sodium in certain compartments or to change the concentration gradient of sodium. And here, it's all about that concentration gradient. So sodium potassium ATPase is gonna move sodium into the body and exchange that for potassium. All of a sudden we have reduced sodium inside the cell, which is going to make a lovely concentration gradient for sodium coming in here from the urinary space. And that sodium is going to move through ENAC, this sodium channel here. How cool is this? It's all working together. And round and round we go, this beautiful concentration gradient and sodium being pumped back into the body. But because when sodium comes back into the body, we have this exchange of potassium, that potassium has to have somewhere to go. And so that potassium goes out into the urine through this little potassium channel. So the connection here is that aldosterone causes us to lose potassium. So aldosterone is associated with hypokalemia. If you have excessive amounts of aldosterone, you will lose more potassium and you'll get hypokalemia. But there's a few ways that this can show up in your MCQs. It might come up as a question about diuretics or potassium sparing diuretics because these block the effects of aldosterone. So we have a couple of different diuretics. Can you name them whilst I get my pen together? <laughs> So these are spironolactone, which blocks the mineral corticoid receptor. And the other potassium sparing diuretic that's super common is amylorite. And that works in a slightly different way by blocking the ENAC channel. And of course, the side effects of potassium sparing diuretics would be high potassium. If you're blocking this whole rig, you're going to lose less potassium. So a key side effect here is increased potassium. So that is a great MCQ. Another way that this might turn up is in type 4 renal tubular acidosis. In type 4 renal tubular acidosis, it's basically just a resistance to aldosterone in the nephron. So resistance to aldosterone or a, an aldosterone deficiency. So let's just think through that. Here in type 4 RTA, what's going to be happening is with aldosterone having less of an effect, they're more at risk of high potassium as well. In renal tubular acidosis, I said that aldosterone had another job. Its other job, apart from salt and water reabsorption, is to help us to lose hydrogen ions in the urine as well. So it has this function in acid-base balance. So that's why aldosterone deficiency or resistance can cause a renal tubular acidosis, which just means the kidney's having a bit of trouble just getting rid of the acid around the place. But for the purpose of your MCQs, I'm just showing you how to connect the dots. And the last place that this could come up, Kohn's syndrome, hyperaldosteronism, Kohn's syndrome, or primary hyperaldosteronism. So that's like when you've got an adrenal gland tumour and it's just chucking out aldosterone just because. <laughs> 
So what's going to happen there? We've got more aldosterone coming in and sort of stimulating this whole rig. So in that situation, we're going to lose potassium. So we're going to have a low potassium in this situation, but lots and lots of salt and water reabsorption. So Kahn syndrome is associated with a low potassium sometimes, not always, but could be, and high blood pressure because of all of that salt and water reabsorption. So that was just to give you a quick win. I just wanted to give you the aldosterone situation fresh in your mind. And you can see how this applies to so many different um, MCQs that could come up around the place, be it pharmacology, be it RTA, be it endocrinology, for heaven's sake. I hope you find this helpful. And of course, if you are studying for your exams, you need to be in my world. Be sure to subscribe um, and like this video um, if it has been helpful. And um, we have some awesome free goodies for you. You can get your hands on that below if you haven't already. And if you've already done the free goodies and you're, you're, you're feeling all in and hell yeah for this learning about the kidney thing for your exams, then be sure to sign up for the Reno for the Written program. It is the best place to learn Reno for your exams. It is super fun. We take complex topics, make them super simple and memorable. And everything is designed so that you actually enjoy studying and you finish each session with a sense of achievement, knowing that you can do this. And it just feels really, 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 really good. So if that sounds like something you need in your life, go ahead, click those links below, and I'll see you on the inside. <laughs> Bye.